everybody. Welcome to Dryer Days Art Studio. I'm Catherine and I'm so happy to have you here. Today I'm going to be doing a galaxy or a nebula resin pour. This is my very first attempt at this technique and I have been sort of waiting for the right time to do it. I wanted to find the right shape, uh, the right design, and I am a huge fan of the stag or deer heads and so I found this piece and I wanted to do it on this for sure. The deer shape I got from the wood shape store, which um, if you want a discount code to the wood shape store, please check out the description of my video uh, down below. And here you can see a smaller one that I've just ordered as well. That is a 10 inch long. Um, the larger one here, the 18 inch, I did get an eighth of an inch thick. Um, and I prepped the back here with my blue painter's tape. Primed it with gesso, painted it black, and now I'm going to show how I make the white stars for the galaxy look. And I just brought in some of that white acrylic paint uh, from Artist Lofts, and I got my brush really wet, and I'm getting some white paint. Really, really want to have it nice and wet, not too thick on your paintbrush. And I have used two different techniques to get my stars before. One is to use sort of um, a flicking motion of your bristles, which I'll show, and the other one is to tap uh, two different brushes together. So here you'll see I just do a flicking motion. And depending on how much paint you have on your brush will depend on sort of how small your stars are or how big they are. Depends on how much water you have in your brush there too and how watered down the paint is. And they're just showing how you can take that brush and tap it on top of another brush. And so either technique will work very nicely to get you some stars. I wanted to make some of my stars a little bit bigger, a little bit more round, so I came in with a very, very fine tip little brush, and these brushes I got at Michael's in a set for my kids. I mean, just very inexpensive brushes. And you can also come in too with your uh, Uni Posca markers, which I have as well, and define these uh, little dots a little bit more, but I wanted to come in with that white acrylic paint and do that here. So I will just mention again that I got this shape from the wood shape store. If you've seen any of my other videos, uh, the shamrocks that I've done, the heart that I've done, I have an Easter egg video coming up. Um, I get all kinds of shapes from the wood shape store. I do typically cut my own rounds, um, rectangles, and other geode shapes, and I do a lot of my own crescent moons. Um, but with it being winter and cold out, um, I try to cut, or my husband tries to cut them outside or in our garage, and it's just been too cold. And so I have gotten some moons from the Woodshape store. If you want to check out the description of this video, I do have a discount code coupon for them, uh, as well as uh, to Stone Coat Art Resin. Uh, that's what I'm going to be using later in this video. Uh, I have a coupon for them. I love Stone Coat Resin, it's my favorite resin, and uh, also a few other shops in there, Laura's Art Corner, as well as Just For You Online UK uh, Glitters, and um, all the other products that I use, like my tape, uh, my painting pyramids, uh, my gloves, you can find all of those listed down below, as well as just a link right to my Amazon store, which uh, will show you all the stuff that I like to get right on Amazon as well. So I hope you all can check that out. Um, if you're able to and you are able to buy from those avenues, it does help support me and my channel. And so I greatly appreciate that. I do usually tape my edges, especially when I'm doing geodes, and I decided to follow that with 
Uh, this piece, um, even though it was my first time doing a Galaxy Nebula, I've seen people not use tape, but I decided since that's what I'm used to doing, I was going to use it for this. And it was really a pain in the rear getting this masking tape in and around all those antlers, but I was able to do it. Uh, I did have some spilling out um, in little corners around the antlers that I wasn't able to fully tape, uh, but I think it worked out okay. Next time I would pr probably maybe try it without using the tape. Um, as you can see here to the left, I have my Stone Coat Art Resin pre-mixed thoroughly per the manufacturer's instructions. And to the right there, I have a whole bunch of goodies that I want to use in this piece. Um, a lot of Rebel Glitter there from Just For You Online UK. I have some Artisan Pigment there in Ocean, which is my favorite pigment by them. You can find them in my Amazon store. Um, I have some pigments, pigment paste from uh, Laura's Art Corner. Those are as pigment paste and they are amazing and Laura sells them in her shop. Coming in here with just my clear resin and getting it laid down across the entire piece. Uh, I do want to mention obviously that the stars, the white acrylic paint is completely dry so that's not getting mixed into this at all. And just moving that clear all around, uh, really give, getting a nice even spread, getting it up into the antlers. Taking a little alcohol swipe here, I clean off my gloves a little bit because I did get some resin on them and I'm getting ready to pick up my heat gun so I wanted to clean off my gloves. Those little alcohol pads you can find in my Amazon store and also listed in the description below. They come in really handy and you get a box of, I think it's a hundred of them so there's so many they've lasted me a really long time. So I am coming in here with my heat gun and just hitting this clear resin before I come in with any of my pigments. I use these little Dixie cups that you can find just at your local grocery store. And what I'll do is I pour a little bit of clear resin into each cup. And then I come in with my pigments and my mica powders and my glitter. I'm using a peacock green here, also from La Res. Um, you can find it at Laura's Art Corner. It's a really, really, really pretty teal. Um, there I added a little bit more of my clear resin back into my main cup because I felt like I had a little bit too much in this cup. You only need about 10% of your additive uh, to your resin. If you add any more than 10%, your resin's going to get really thick. Sometimes I like to really thicken up my resin for working purposes, but I didn't want that in this case. I wanted all of it to be about the same consistency. The clear resin um, and my additives, I wanted all of it to be about the same. Uh, you can see that teal is just beautiful in there, that peacock green. Um, Coming in here with a little bit more clear, um, I gauged it as far as what I wanted to use as other colors, what I knew I wanted to be a little bit more prominent, um, and so that's why I'm adding a little bit more into this cup here. Uh, those sticks that I used to stir my resin, those smaller ones, I find at Hobby Lobby. So this is a beautiful silver um, pigment paste from La Res. I love this silver. obsessed with blue so that's why I'm adding more resin in here because I know that I'm going to be grabbing from my blue glitter from Rebel Glitters from Just For You Online UK and I'm also going to be adding into that cup um, Ocean Mica Pigments from Artisan Pigments which you can find on Amazon. I love glitter so much and my husband loves deer just about as much as I do and uh, he gets a little perturbed when I add too much glitter to my deer stuff because you know it's just making it girly I guess but I just love it I'm so obsessed and um, these products that I use are top of the line um, and I am a firm believer in using better products I think you get better results with them and uh, I'm just getting beautiful consistency with all these products here. The colors are vibrant 
And uh, yeah, at this point I'm getting really excited, ready to go. But you wanna make sure you're mixing these things thoroughly, especially with the glitter, that you're getting them really well mixed in with those pigments and the resin. Uh, depending on your glitter, if it's glass, it can sink to the bottom. So just always make sure you're getting it really thoroughly mixed before you're ready to use it. This Royal Velvet pigment that I'm using here, I got from Laura at, Je at uh, Laura's Art Corner. And I'm going to mix in a little bit of the purple glitter from Just For You Online UK in the Rebel Glitters. Giving a beautiful effect mixing these two together. And you know, don't be afraid to mix different products together. I do it all the time, um, especially when you kind of have a vision in your head and you know what kind of look you're going for. Play around, experiment. Um, you know, and we can't have fully stocked art studios all the time. So if I know I'm going for a certain look um, and I've got two different products and I think they can go together, try it out. You never know, you might get some phenomenal results. And finally, using my Angel White Pigment Paste from La Res. This is one of my favorite whites to use in my resin, and you just need a tiny bit. That jar has lasted me a very long time, and it's nowhere near being tapped out. So uh, you can find that again at Laura's Art Corner, and there is a coupon code in the video description for her store. one last hit with my heat gun there um, you know the one thing I really like about the stone coat art resin is that it has a really long working time um, you know as you can see I had mixed that clear resin I went in and I laid that clear resin beforehand and then I mixed all of those colors up and I still had the workability to come in here I mean I was working on this piece for I think it was about 35 to 40 minutes um, with still really nice silky resin it was not drying up or getting thick on me and it was just a joy to use I love that so much about this resin Okay, I know predominantly with these pieces, people use a blow dryer with the extension on the end to blow the resin around where they want it. I happen to have an airbrush uh, makeup tool here. And that is what I am using to move this around. Now, it didn't give me a whole lot of movement. Um, I probably would use a hair dryer next time. I have a hair dryer that I use in my studio, but I have lost the extension on the end of it. And so I was kind of timid about using it. I didn't want this full blast of hair dryer hot air going on this thing. I wanted something a little bit more controlled. That's why I opted for the airbrush. Um, but again, next time I would, I would really like to try it with a hair dryer and see how those effects work. I know my head keeps kind of popping in here and getting in the way. I apologize about that. I just, since I'd never done this technique before, I was really trying to stay on top of the piece and see exactly what was going on everywhere. Um, when I speed this up, you can really see the resin and the colors really gravitating toward the antlers. And I, my table is perfectly level. I checked it a million times before I started. I always check it to make sure it's level. Uh, the piece was level. I, the only thing I can 
rationalize, even though I have my painter's pyramids there under it, I don't have a whole lot of them under the antlers. And the body, the head, the sort of upper torso of this thing is obviously a lot heavier than those thin antlers. And so I'm just not sure if somehow it just sort of gravitated to float down that way. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm okay with the end results of this piece. I like how it came out. I think you can definitely just sort of tell that it flowed that direction and um, still trying to figure out why that happened. After waiting about four hours, I came in and pulled that outside tape off all around and just gently blended it into the edges. Being that this is only an eighth of an inch thick, I didn't have to move a whole lot of resin around the edge, which was nice. Uh, the tape came off really easily and the piece was curing very nicely. And here is the finished product. I am really happy with how it came out, especially for my first try and being such a different shape and not just a standard round or a rectangular square. Uh, that definitely added a little bit of challenge at times, uh, especially this being my first time trying this technique. Uh, but I really love the colors and I love how dreamy and just ethereal it looks, really giving to that nebula type style of this. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Come check out my Instagram at Dryer Days, and I also have a Facebook group called Dryer Days Art Studios Resin and Fluid Art Group where you can come share your own art, ask questions, get information. So again, I really hope you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep on pouring.